discussing before, we've got Funnick on the offlane for the puck. We'll have Dendi into that middle lane. Uh, Solo is the Ember Spirit. Kuro looks like he's going to be hovering around looking to babysit whoever needs it, be it Raze or Ember in the early game. Puppy will be the tree and protector. And that leaves last but not least, the Man of Lightning. It'll be Havost down in that fourth position, bottom lane. Meanwhile, Team Newbie playing on the upper side right now. How's going to be your carry player? He's going to be handling that Weaver Shanch on the support Earthshaker. Meanwhile, Shao Eight, your offlaner, captain, motivational leader, and the most experienced player by far on that Tie Hunter Shao Eight. We have Banana playing Shadow Shaman, and last but not least, Mu on that solo mid Death Prophet. So, the key thing I do want to point out uh, just about the players and the heroes is that Banana, I've seen him play Shadow Shaman quite a bit, but. Uh, I'm like not exactly the most impressed by him. A lot of times he like blinks in the miss hexes or miss shackles. Uh, sometimes he miss a war trap. Although war trap is very difficult, but I think in this particular level of play, it might. It, the I don't want to say begins. instantaneous, but it should be fairly accurate. I don't know. I, I sent a random jab at the mana, maybe undeservedly, but. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Nah, he's going to be okay. If if Kuro was able to tether down into the river, he might have been able to get in front. Uh, but Kuro bumped himself up into the into the cliff line. So because of that, he couldn't get in front. He didn't have the extra slow. So they didn't get extra harassment time over Banana. Now, Banana also went for boots first. So obviously, it's a, it's a bit of a problem when you have uh, Shadow Shaman because his movement speed is just so poor. So you get the boots first. I'm also <laughs> watching uh, Zhao Wei. Not the easiest thing in the world to do, using a haste to try and block the bottom lane. But he already had the fissure from the Earthshaker to help him out. So this bottom lane is very close towards the Dire Tower, which is really is such a great start for Zhao Wei for this to happen because the force can't really do anything against him. Static Link can force him back every now and then, but when the creep waves up this far, there's just a little point. And you see Poppy already, he starts off with the heart people. That's a pretty good one to grab. Or to stack, excuse me. When you said puppy, I was like, oh, he's Chan, he's Enchantress. He found a harpy? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That connection was, uh, he's... Yeah. The, the, the wires are getting crossed. Zhao Wei is just going to lead to the experience here, but look at his start already. Okay, so one, one fissure block kept the creep wave in really nice and close. And because of this, now with also leading the, the uh, experience from the Harpies, he's now at two and a half levels, one minute in for this Tide Hunter. It's the perfect start you could have for a Tide. It means you've already got your Kraken, you've already got your Anchor Smash, which means coming in close is really difficult to get any kind of damage off. So it's going to be a rough run no matter how they look at it. Yep. The other thing to point out is that the top lane's not exactly going too well for Funic either. I mean, he's going to get a ton of experience because it's essentially a 1v1 lane. But the problem is, it's a 1v1 lane. That means that Shao Shaman could get a ton of experience. How beats him in that 1v1 because he's got much better harass as well as uh, perhaps even a killing suite of spells. So I think Newbie is fairly advantaged in two out of three lanes. Mid has to be big for Navi. And I'm not sure if it is because... Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slow big. Uh, you actually watch what Koro is doing right now. He's got a triple stack and a double stack. One of them is Mud Golem, so he's not going to be happy about that. But they're going to level up Flame Guard here on Dendi. And with Kuro Wisp as well as Dendi's Flame Guard, they can burn through these camps really quickly. So it's a power level fight. The middle lane also, you saw Muru throw out a Crypt Swarm just before. It took off a lot of life of Kuro and Dendi, but they just healed themselves up. This is the power of running this Wisp in towards that middle lane. Dendi running in close. Searing chains over on Muru. Sunset's on the way in though. He's got a Fissure. Dendi might be a too far in under the tower. Fissure will connect on both. But now Kuro, he's still got the tether attached to Dendi, living armor as well, finally not being applied to Dendi and not over towards Kuro. But either way, it's going to be nice level of aggression into Mu. And now Kuro can just heal him up a little bit more, back up, and they do the stack again. Very good patience coming out from Shanshan. Could have fissured much earlier if you wanted to, but threw it out as the Ember entered a tower range, so they got a lot more physical damage uh, as a result. Um, I like the fact that you brought up about the bottle. The problem is, yes, the regen is always there, but the problem is, a lot of times when you play dual miss or wisp mid plus another, you can spam very hard thanks to the mana regen as well. That's something that Sling can't exactly take Dyer's advantage of. Top tower what are you really going to spam, I guess? Chains or... Yeah, yeah. there's not much spam. Ch yeah. Chains and spirits. It's very, well, it's very similar to the way um, you could run it with a tiny. Yeah, the it, tiny can spam much easier with a toss or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do it from range, but 
in this scenario too, you want to be getting in front lines, taking damage. I still class No Tail as like one of the greatest Wisp mid players I, I watch. Because what he does is he just pop, pops up the spirits, obviously burning off a little bit of mana, comes in, does as much harassment, physical damage, and tries to take some. Like you bait out the abilities from the opponent in the middle lane. So just a simple Crypt Swarm will be enough. So you take the damage and then you're like, oh, I sweet. Now then you go to the front lines, you do the same thing. And you basically play like tag team. It's like WrestleMania in the mid lane when you run with a Wisp. And all you gotta do is just keep doing that and you're basically uh, you, you're, you're being the most efficient with your regeneration because you're regenerating both up when you tether in that manner. Mm -hmm. I should also point out too that Denny needs to farm up these stacks. Uh, Kuro has stacked it as much as he possibly can. Yeah. He's got a triple stack on both of the camps. He has attempted a quad stack twice now on the, uh, on the lower camp, but he's failed on that one. It's not like he's losing too much time because essentially whenever he's out of the lane it's Dendi getting the solo experience, uh, which arguably is probably even better, but yeah. Wow, is Buffy really going to get himself in here? Now the sideline actually cuts off around here right now for uh, for Mu, so we can't see down that far. And with uh, Sunshine making his way up, we'll spot out Puppy. So they see each other straight for the scene, and then he's going to move forward. No sign of Fizz, but he puts the flame guard, gets a searing chase over on Sunshine. Fizz, Yakoro, too much damage being applied to him. He has to back himself up high. Ooh. That Latas attack almost bringing you down. 11 life points remaining. Luckily, the creep wave was actually stuck on the Earthshaker Fisher at the time. Again, good patient from Sunshine. Fissure when they are under your tower range. Do much more damage. Mm. But, yeah, very calm early game. I think calm early game favors uh, Newbie Ooh, as we see a dive. <gasps> Sorry, Crip Swarm hit him in middle lane. He went down to 32 life points. This guy needs his wisp back. But he doesn't want to leave the experience which he knows he can gain in middle lane. There's, like two, there's, there's a full creep wave there. If Newbie hits him with one more Crip Swarm, he's down. Looks like he's actually got his own bottle as well. So two bottle on the mid lane. Essentially. A lot of life points to be had, man. Yeah. Zhao Wei's almost level 6. One other thing we should probably flag out. So that means uh, inclusion of Ravage can come at any point. That TP into any lane which is under pressure, and then a Ravage turnaround. Navi with their aggression they've been showing in the middle lane so far, but I'd be a lot more tempered with that. I think uh, the fact that there's two bottles in the mid lane and Moose still doing okay, that speaks to how powerful this particular hero is. Like, Quip Swarm Harass is no joke, considering that she is also bottle growing. And to be fair, she's getting a ton of help from Shangsheng as well. There has been two semi dives so far, and none actually successful thanks to the Shaker. Looks like the rune is gonna get uh, snatched up. Oh, sorry. I imagine Kuroki will bottle that. In fact, he will. Yeah. Just, a quick, just an easy haste rune. That actually gives him a bit more of a ticket to be a, a little bit more aggressive, but uh, I'm still pointing out these, these triple stacks are sitting here with not being farmed up, and it means there's no extra stacking potential for Koro to do at this point. But he's going to go straight away over to Koro. He does have the haste room. Oh, dies the before block. he gets triggered off. The fissure block actually blocked the banana out of uh, Shackle. That was an easy walk in Shackle. Would have been a double kill. A rare mistake out of Shenzhen there. Well, that could be big, because first blood is great, but they really want Dendi. It might have been really difficult to get him, though. Straight away, the living armor went over to Dendi, and he had his flame guard up at the second the fight began as well. So, it would have been a difficult kill to get, but you are right, it would have been a potential kill. Yeah. While Hal, very aggressively behind that tier 1 tower in the top lane. The ping's coming out from Funny saying, I don't have orb available, but it looks like Weaver's going to back himself at, at, up anyway, so, yeah. No choice. Funnick is actually ranking up uh, Lose Your Warp instead of Raining Rift. Oh, Hal's in again. I mean, Funnick you can make this kind of dives. There's only one rank of Radiant's silence on Funnick. How, how has his ultimate? He just leveled up time lapse. But he's waited a little bit too long to use it to get his life back again, but he's still going to try and battle up against Funnick. He evades the first attack with the phase shift. And he'll get hit by the Gemnet attack on the second lot. On the second lot. Yeah. But how he's almost wasting a little bit of time as he's backing up now, because the creep wave's going to push into the tier 1 tower, and Banana just did a pull. Dyer's so it's right tower underneath the tower. So this creep is going to come back down the way of Funnick eventually. Yeah, what we're seeing right now is a very unique playstyle of Weaver. Uh, only really how does, some, does this. He played a ton of Weaver back in TI3 under Tong Fu. A lot of Weaver likes to farm for like things like Midas and whatnot. He plays it like an in-lane harasser. And that's why you can see that he's constantly diving behind the enemy tower. He's doing a ton of harass. And that may not give him a lot of farm himself. But you got to keep in mind that he's also indirectly... Excuse me, he's directly reducing the farm of Funnick, for example, because he's, you know, Funnick's constantly entangled with him. Mm -hmm. So, Radiant's it's top a very tower unique is under attack. <laughs> it's, I don't know if he was really wanting to have a run for that rune just then, but with Funnick leaving his top lane with no orbs to throw out, because he needed the illusion rune so he can get his bottle charges back up again, he's going to try and hold his top lane. TP's coming away, and then if he's hearing 
chain straight away. Hound's gonna be right there, so he's all teeing up and searching for Banana. That's a single chain on Hound. Didn't really want it because he knew the time was gonna kick in and find himself in a ranch for a silence. That was a reason for hesitation from Denny to start with. That's an expensive TP, because not only did he TP, he did get a kill, and then Moose striking at the mid tower. Not gonna get the tower right now, but a good bit of chunk, uh, chunk damage that Newbie just did. I feel like Newbie is rotating much better thanks to Shansha. And uh, they're avoiding the gank as well. Also, the rotation from Shao He's coming back mid. Every time he's mid, he's got Ravi. <laughs> and I think I think because of they have, they have Ravi, Chiron Carmichael is ready to tell me good for this plan right now. Shao Wei, is he going to use the Ravi? The Fisher holding a force away. Only got 14 points of damage. Dollar Denny, Searing Change on Shao Wei. It's like they're trying to bait out the Ravi, but they do not have enough damage to make it. So it's still 1 0 in favor of Nubi. Yep. And they brought her force now, obviously. That's now the second time in the space of one minute that the core of Na'Vi has been forced to rotate to a different lane. Yeah, I feel like Newbie's essentially doing more with the same amount of resource put in. And if you look over to your Banana, he's almost got the Master of Reward. He's just like one creep kill away. And once that happens, these towers are going to drop very, very quickly. Radiance what is the trade-off here? Like, what is exactly is Na'Vi getting out of? They have a level 4 tree, which is nice in terms of at least slowing down these pushes. But aside from that, Wisp is not level 6. They got that quad stack, triple stack, but they haven't actually had a time to tick it. Yeah. Den so. Denny's been busy every time, and I've seen Kuro. He, he's actually had five failed pole attempts just because it's too, it's too stacked. The creeps just move back too fast. Or they get blocked up on each other. So I kind of almost want to see Denny move off that lane and just let Kuro farm it up himself. Funnick's still going to hold the top lane, which is going to be really difficult. Mass level was being dropped up here, and the TP is actually coming in. That's Denny TPing in. The stun has already gone off, but Denny also getting hexed up after the TP in. They use Dream Call on Howl and Howl alone, but Denny wants a free kill on Banana. He's going to get one too. That's just Flame Guard is going to burn him out, even with the shackles. Howl's still got time left, but the Living End is protecting Denny. The top tower did go down, and now how? Maybe a little overextension. The Fissure follows through, kills off Funnick right there. Now getting very over aggressive, giving a double kill to Dendi. Yeah, that's again how that's how he plays a Weaver. He plays an aggressive, but unfortunately that hero only has like 700 health in the run. He was waiting for that Fusion to come through a little bit late on that regard, but still got the tier one tower. Looks like he's gonna get a tier one mid tower as well. Radiance Ooh. middle tower. Got a little has bit dangerous. They were trying to keep it alive with living arms. Oh, it's like they're trying to cut it. Wow. Ravage. Oh, it's warped! The plasma field does a lot of damage. The fissure was also on the way in. That's why they had so much aggression there. If that connected, Kuro and Avors be in a lot of trouble, but that high, high movement speed between the two of them just allowed them to outrun the ripples of the Ravage. Oh, that was a big miss, but I think the, the key thing is that Newbie, whenever they pop an ultimate, they get a tower at this point. And I'm talking about Master of Ward as well as Exorcism. They could tag him it up, and if you look over to the Shadow Shaman, he's got the Medallion Courage. Roshan should be happening very, very soon. Yeah. I imagine the next cooldown awards, it will happen then. You'd say in 24 Dyer's seconds? Then? Middle tower yep. is under attack. I'll be with you on that one, man. But for now, where's the rest of Newbie going to head themselves out to? Roshan is just one part of it. They still need to keep that Weaver farming up. And how? over on the top lane, Treads, Ring of Aquila, Wand, and Ring of Health. And we're only 12 minutes in now for the Weaver. He's going to try and, in fact, control the lane on top of all of this. Should also point out that Ancient Stack is now a quad Ancient Stack for newbies. Zhao Wei's going to get power leveled up, and not just power leveled, that farm is going to give him his mech. So now Zhubi's team fight's going to get even bigger. Yeah, it's multiple games now that Shao has actually favored the mech over the Blink Dagger. And I think that this game, it's, it's actually so much better uh, that you get the mech because you have already so much more pushing power. You just bulldoze your way into the base even if you want to. So, maybe they're ready to control this game. <laughs> He's taking no damage. And yeah. he is actually, okay. He's maybe He's taking, taking some. He's taking 10 points of damage every five seconds -ish. And then he's regening with a tango as well, so we can regen, yeah. And that's only a level 2 Kraken show, mind you. Like, if he max it, he's actually not taking damage. No. There's uh, a really smart Ember Spirit ulti now. The Spirit's been thrown into the pit. So, Nubi, they also, uh, uh, Navi, they also realize the potential of Nubi to go in and take out Roshan. So they're gonna watch it very closely. And with the Spirit inside there, it's kind of like a real bad thing for Newbie. They can't do anything about it. It just sits there. Well, you, I mean, you can't kill it or we'll remove it. Another way to look at it is I throw Master Serpent Ward. I use Exorcism. You see me doing it. Okay? Like, what, what can you do about the fact that you see them doing Roche? If, if Newbie wants to overcommit for that, they can. 
but it seems like they're gonna look at towers as the more important objective for now. Well, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult now. The mech is finished over on Newbie, yes, but Avost also completed his own. So Navi staying alive during the team fight between the Wisp, the Living Armor, as well as the Mech. They are actually very, very difficult to kill. Not to even mention the Flame Guard that's going to be over on Dendi. And he's going to about, about to reach uh, the point where he can buy full drums as well. So Navi will have a lot of buff ups during the fight to keep them going. The one person which I'm still wondering whose impact, like how much of an impact he's going to have, is Funnick. Uh, it looks like the chain's going to fly off right now. Who's taking a ton of damage? No, you'll have to just finish him. The Fissure's going to come what? in. What a triple jump from Dendi, but he's <laughs> out of escapes. But there's no way shutting him down. In fact, it's uh, <laughs> Looks like he's going to find a haste. They have Ravage if you want to spend it. They can't. No, not solo Dendi. You know you can't get a kill if you do such a thing. Kuro's going to also tether himself away right now. Hal's moved himself in. Is under and uh, yeah, Kuro gets the living armor. This is classic Hal. This is behind enemy lines. Oh, he's he coming in. He needs a little bit of support. He needs lockdown from the team, but... Looks like there is uh, nothing to be found. Mm -hmm. that, the commitment from Dendi straight away, like when you use those three ultimates, you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't need a, a follower as game maker. As long as I kill the cross, like his job is done. And it really is. Because the force is getting Dyer's bigger and bigger as time goes fortified. on. He's going to crack the 100 CS mark 14 minutes in here, and he is above that of the Weaver as well as the Croc. Now, Nubi are going to attempt to go in for Roshan. Master of Mords are committed. While the Mords, he's almost got the T1 tower in the bottom lane. Moose looking at it to deny Dyer's the catapults there, but he does get the denial off. And the Mords chasing him down. Little Rookate's coming in on top of Rue as well. The Fissure, though, perfectly timed by Sanchek. Crypt Swarm of Silence, they're pushing him back. And Nubi, well, they're wasting a little bit of time with these Master of Mords. Roshan's at 3,000 3, life points. Dyer's now, Funny Mords going to fly in too. And Scout's at the fact that Roshan is being done. So, Navi, Dream Fight, catching off three. They're going to go in deep. The Grom Ultra will go. Slides with the 40 phases out the mech, but the day Aegis is more over the Weaver Kuro tethers himself away from Xiao Wei, who does like this ravage up and running. Another wall flying in Dendi with the living armor of Flame Guard up and running. He's going to come back in, gets the tearing chains over from Banana, who's ticking down really, really low. No sign of fist available. Banana has to hide at the pit, there's no second way to get out. Punch kill, too short to reach in, and now the wall flop. Banana will go down inside the pit, boo, locked in again. The ravage goes out from Xiao Wei, only connecting him for the fourth with the Fissure, and <laughs> Dendi bouncing in and out. A pit over the top of Living Armor. Havort now is trying to kill him off here. Now running up towards the high ground, but Living Armor is protecting him. He has to time left himself out, but now the searing chains up the side of Fist from Denny, holding Hao in position. He'll run himself away under the cover of Shikuchi. While Sunshine moving back past the tier one tower in the middle lane. Do they try and go for this kill, or do they just finish up the tower? It looks like we're just going to finish everything while Kuro teeping himself out on the bottom river. Hao was there with two of himself for the illusions but he teamed himself back to base. I still can't believe there's only four two on the board after that. Yeah, I mean, there's actually essentially one team because it's just Shadow Shaman that died. What a well-positioned team fight for Na'Vi. Basically, Xiaowei stood in the middle of the fight for like 10, 15 seconds, and he was just looking for any time he could find two people. Mm -hmm. The Ravage only found one. That's a pretty impressive way Dyer's if you think about it. Like, Ravage has a huge AOE, and Na'Vi constantly dance in and out, but... I feel like that Radiant Roshan advantage is, is big, attack. it's too huge. Because the experience is big, and the fact that it gave a bunch of gold to Death Prophet, she's got a yield scepter finish and a point booster, she's very tanky at this point. The question is, Navi feels like they're confident because there is no Ravage. They can feel like they can fight into this. There's no Ravage, there's no crop holding for another 10 seconds at least. So she can't initiate in here, it's just a crypt form of harassment damage back again. But I don't even know if Moose the problem here. Like you got a lot of healing coming out from Navi all the time. But I'm like, you're gonna be how diving for fun. Funnick's gonna drop oh. a foil and a silence and how no. he's gonna go down. He does have the Aegis, but not exactly the best way to use that Aegis. Here comes the TP and he's gonna try to link up. Yeah. Time lapse, oh wait, he loses because of time lapse. Blink into an orb, how's gonna survive and get out. Result. And they're gonna come in right now. Oh, this massive Serpent War Trap! The Echo Slam! It's way too much damage! How stuck in this War Trap right now? He's fine though. He'll walk out. And the Yule Scepter finds that the Wisp up. He's trying to get out of there. He's gonna make it home. He'll take Tinny with him as well with the relocate, but that leaves running down here, but he'll bullet game up away to safety. That initial catch out on Hal was great, but of course the Aegis the Lord of the back to life again. Radiant's and then Navi just found themselves in the worst choke point, coming out of the trees, and then just getting snapped back by both Sun Sheng as well as those Shadow Shaman boards. They were locked in a box of death. And in fact, there is the box being drawn. Yes. And right now, it's uh, Banana nearing towards his Blink Dagger, trying to initiate on Ember Spirit as well as Puck, I imagine. Earthshaker, not nearly towards anything yet, but I think Arcane Boots is very big pickup. Not just because he needs some mana, but 
in this particular game, the team fights are drawn out for such a long time that if you don't have mana throughout multiple fissures, you're kind of standing Deadly. around. Slide of fist here and chains over on Hal. They were they were having a bit of a peek around from him, and Hal was trying to hide himself in the tree line. But then he's trying to force the top lane and force a reaction. They got a reserver ward back behind the tower as well. Then trying to make newbie waste some more time so there's more space here for a vault to farm up and finally get to either a BKB or that Aghanim Scepter. The thing is, I'm not sure whether BKB or Aghanims allows you to fight into Exorcism and Mass Serving Wards in front of the tile with the Ravage backup. Like, there's just so scary of a push coming from newbie that I don't think Navi has the heroes or items to really deal with that. How nearing the finish of his Lincoln Sphere? That's the important thing as far as any item coming out from Newbie. Like the whole crawl, Ravage, all that kind of jazz thing, um, if Moo could say it live after this little movement in mid lane with the smoke movement, um, is the fact that Navi have enough stability and like through like regeneration that can deal with Newbie noob without the Weaver. But when Weaver starts bringing in damage, there's a problem. Yeah. Like that first fight they had around the bottom river, that was one of those things where you saw how he was running up on the high ground trying to kill off the Razor and completely failing the entire time because Living Armor was there, because Mech was there, and because Wisp was also in the neighborhood keeping him buffed up and protected. So because of all of this, Hal's damage became, like, futile. It, it didn't do anything during the fight. Well, that said, though, a lot of other Weavers would have just farmed and allows his team to 5v4. Yes. I do appreciate the fact that he's coming in. Sure, he's not getting killed, but he's still chasing people away. And that does make the rest of your team fight much easier so I actually think the way that Pal is playing Weaver is actually the correct way especially in complementing what his team is trying to do a big smoke coming out from newbie but it looks like attack. they're not gonna find anybody they're, they're setting up base right now Fluffy is actually sitting here inside the Diocide jungle just waiting for someone to walk up and then he'll just stalk them over towards Havos. Now Havos thinks he can just take this free tower. And they're gonna realize in a moment that they've been pushed down Dyer's mass open wards, as fallen. well as uh, Moo with a TD rune on him. And all from Funny only hit the range as well. So this time Creek Wave, it does get dragged back by the tower, but Banana blinks it. Then he kicks over on Funny. Follow up Shackle, Living Arm is coming up. He needs to get the top of the vision from the Earthshaker. It's yours to kill. Then he's still considering going back in there again, but Spider Pit's on cooldown for the moment. Fallen. The tower's also lost. So there's not much to be gained from fighting outside your base. Maybe a little chip damage, and he got two heroes into that searing chain. But the mech charge from Ruby repairs all the damage. Yep. They did lose a T1 tower in the top lane, so it becomes a one hero and one tower trade for just one tower. Yeah. And the tower they got is much more important, so I feel that newbie continue to ramp up to the item. There is that Lincoln Sphere finish. If you look over to Moo, he's almost got that Bloodstone finish as well, so. The items are really coming out at a much accelerated rate, and it's no surprise that Newbie is leading by about 6,000 gold uh, experience. Not as much, but I imagine as they take more and more Roshans, it's gonna come. Oh, Puppy's on his way to north. They just guised up, trying to look for a good ultimate. And Newbie, maybe they're gonna feel this is a little bit wrong. Yeah, because everyone apart from one hero, and that's Havorst again, is missing on the lanes. As Puppy, a secondary wave of Invis, comes around the corner, sees Sunshine, so we know it's what's behind the tower, and she has Banana and well, Sunshine. Sentry War gets right, right now. There's like no reason to do so, and now Puppy is waiting for the ult, but Sunshine gets got hit by the Fissure, almost out the ult, but they got the kill over on the Shadow Shaman. Meanwhile, in the lane, a boss is coming in for Xiao Wei. He starts the connection in Xiao Wei, still with Ravage. Being thundered by the Dream Soul, losing a lot of damage in Echo Sam from Sunshine, trying to keep him out. Koro, he actually relocated him, but there's enough damage. Oh, but he off. The next one, Vorst will keep him up, and a Vorst turns that 70 damage into time on the Meanwhile, while Lumis further back up. Denny chasing under Sunshine. He duels the after up the doors of the air as the relocate will drag Koro back out. This fight, Funny, wanting to go in deeper, and another movement from Dendi. Beautifully done with the slide of fist in a series change. Picks up the Earthshaker. Three heroes going down, while how? Now you'll have a crack in a Vorst. The Bugs are in the back, the TPs are coming in towards the tower. He's got to get rid of the negative arm and not going to be fast enough though. Banana team feeds in to go for the ether shock. Deadly silenced up right now by Moo. How's the tail end of him as well as Koro? But then both of them pick up and top, put them up and Poppy oh, throws the ulti. This is really a bait it. And now with the shock, Whisper's going down again. They found the shackles though, but the yours have instantly followed up. Dandy as he goes for the slide of fist, bumps down the bottom lane. He'll avoid again the Scarab Beetles coming out, Radiant's but how he wants to keep this pressure on. Chasing down Puppy. Puppy will go in fist. Dandy will still hover himself around. He doesn't have his flame guard up anymore. Well, not for the moment. It's out now, but Funnick comes in. Banana will have a fall. Xiao Wei still no ravage, but returning the fight against Punic. Funnick as well as Puppy. And Puppy just sends them both in fist. Oh. detection. They just bring him down with the Angus Man in the tree line before the fake can be completed.
Oh wow, normally these are great fights to take against a team that likes to clump up and use all of their ultimates, like for example, Master of War Trap, as well as Exorcism, but the way that Hao played in that fight, he was just constantly picking off the, the smaller heroes. Dyer's the worst guy can pick off very quickly. Attack. Puck is not exactly the, the tankiest of beasts at this point. I think Hao joining to the fight is re the reason why Newbie's doing so well. And also, Mu is just way too big at this point. The Yule Scepter actually messed up the kill on Dendi on the initial try, because yep. there was a Shackle, but he used it off. But at this point, he's throwing out Crypt Swarm every time he comes up. Cooldown, he's a tanky hero that you can't ignore. I don't know how Navi's going to deal with Mu. I think it's going to get a little bit different now that uh, Dendi is going to finish up his Battle Fury in a moment. So just a little bit different. I'm not going to say this is going to be the critical game-changing item, which he could just destroy the world with, but it's definitely going to go along the lines to help him. And uh, with that regeneration, because he hasn't been fighting with the damage or the regeneration from that, mm -hmm. let alone the cleave, which is what he wants. And he's now 10 gold away from finishing the whole shebang. So with that, he's going to be a lot better to do. Remember too, with just the maneuverability coming out here from, from the Wisp as well as the Ember Spirit together, they could be bumping themselves all across the map. Yep. And I would say that the Battle Fury is excellent for this stage of the game. Whenever you're not fighting, Radiant's it accelerates your farm that attack. much more. And I think I think you're right to say that Battle Fury isn't that big bump, but whatever he's getting next, perhaps that da Daedalus, that is the item that he's looking for. Meanwhile, I, I like to see what Razor's got. Well, he's looks like he's working towards that Aghanim Scepter with the BKB finish. The problem with this early BKB is that you can BKB walk in and start, you know, doing some damage, but the team is so mobile. I, I don't think he's going to catch too many people, but it looks like you see the up top. Yeah, they're waiting for the Battle Fury to finish flying in before they start this gank. And they also want to make sure that Mu overextends himself on this top, because it's so important that, that they isolate him. With Mu, with the, with the Plate Mail, the Yule Scepter, as well as the Bloodstone, he is an insanely difficult target to kill. So they need to make sure he's isolated and can be controlled. As they're controlled, he's still got a Yule Scepter, and until they have a side of the vice, they can't properly control him. But Zhao Wei is now coming towards the middle lane. Of course, well, Hao runs straight past him. But Puppy, he's been doing he's such a walking ward here inside the jungle. Speaking of warding, look how heavy it is from Navi inside the Dyerside jungle. They want to see any movement Dyer's coming from top that top lane up attack. into the jungle area. Which means they have basically three camps they can farm up safely. They should know that there is uh, Roshan going on because they don't see anybody. They don't want to fight. Yeah, they don't want to fight right now, and they should have. Like if they try to have a 5 to 5 fight inside the Rosh pit with uh, Newbie obviously Dyer's side, they'll be in a lot of trouble here. Their key right now is winning almost on split push and getting a pick off here and there. Sunshank, there's a Dyer Sentry Ward, it's a little bit further away, they throw the bugs out, and Puppy just goes into lead seeds, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they can see me, but he was in between both the, uh, both the Sentry Wards, there was actually that small little slither of space in the trees, which was in fact safe. Yeah, Banana says we're not happy anymore with that, let's get a jump, <laughs> look how many, they commit three Sentry Wards to get rid of these observers, but the look at the different observer wards, there's a really aggressive one, just a little bit further east in the Dyer Side jungle. Maybe. That's so far out that you would never even... Okay, there's it. Yeah, there's it's good. Yeah. They actually even search for it. Yeah, maybe uh, Puppy took a page out of the Pylai Dai Courier playbook. Like, I'm in this. I could, I could kill couriers, maybe. But, uh... Difference is, that was a bounty hunter yeah. compared to a, a tree and protector. Hal, he's really getting over-offensive here on a boss. He knows how far he can force him out as well. Get him off that top lane. I mean, Hal doesn't care. Like, he's got Aegis, he's got Time Lapse, he's got Sakuchi. He's it's working that data. Yeah, th sorry, De Deso. And that's where you, you go back to your previous discussion of, okay, he's coming to the fights, but he doesn't have that much damage. Well, now he will. Yeah. It's, it's the perfect time as well. 27 minutes in with the Lincolns as well as a Desolator. He's right on the average mark right there. And, uh, well, with this though, they have to keep adding pressure in towards the towers. The other upside about having a Desolator, great up against heroes, even better up against buildings. And this means you can take great map control. Then you can get spotted out by just one of the Tide Under Illusions. Uh, it doesn't do anything to the Tide Under Illusion. In fact, takes a lot of damage from the Searing Chain, so Denny knows it's a fake. But Hal's going to spring the momentum of this bottom lane into the tier 2 tower. And the rest of the newbie lineup, they're preparing for that bottom lane. All four of them prepped up inside the, di inside the Radiant Jungle, making sure there's no flank initially coming in from Na'Vi. And then they just take the tower. Yeah. What Na'Vi really want to force this game into is like a back and forth running team fight. Because I don't think that's where Earthshaker and perhaps Shadow Shaman really excels at. For example, Tide Hunter, once you drop your Ravage, he's pretty much done in the fight. 
Whereas if you look at the Navi's here, like things like Plasma Radiant Field, the Ember Spirit, the Pot, they, they don't have that one big burst, but what they do have is a lot of low cooldown spells. So the question is, how do you force Yubi to take those fights when the initial running into Yubi is so hard? Essentially, you're running into a Ravage and an Echo Slam mm -hmm. with a Blink Dagger on top. It's so hard to run into Newbie to force them to run. Top tower the only downside for Newbie is that Blink Dagger is still back in the career. Now, funny. Quick jump in, Banana, very low on life because he got hit by that rift out of the blink out. Racks if they don't come defend now. Uh, they, they're getting rid of the mass surf wars, but yeah, you're right. They're just trying to find the full trade off. Power. Then he's ready to come back and fight. Radiant's and he's just waiting for the ulti of Moon wear off. And then he'll come back with a DD Green inside of his model and then try and battle it out. If you said how he's poking into apply that Nestle down, that's Rain Burn. Ah, Melee Rax is gonna go down. Wow. They really that's overestimate cool. how slowly Newbie could take the base, but his mass over ward, plus Exorcism, top plus Nestle. That's the freest Rax I've ever seen. Yeah. I I'm really not quite sure why Navi didn't even want to like, like even assign a fist with Syrian Chase for the Battle Fury DD that would have cleaned up most of what was coming in just then. But it was like they just left two, three heroes behind to defend the lines there, Na'Vi. And said, you know what? We lose the bottom ranks, we're gonna lose it anyway. At least we don't lose heroes, and maybe we get more money on an Ember Spirit. It's... I mean, I think they just got over greedy with a Tier 2. And be like, mm. we, could, we could get the Tier 2 and we could defend, but... Maybe Na'Vi feel confident enough to keep the creep waves out. But then it's gonna be all the work of Dendi. A Forced is not really that great at keeping all the creep waves out, apart from like a plasma field. And then you get the cleave from Dendi, you're not gonna look at Kuro to get rid of Super Size Me creeps. Funic is never really great at that either. This is the guy building into a Dagon. He's a man trying to snipe out different heroes, but they also don't know about the Urshika Blink Dagger. Never was revealed. They backed up before the Kuro even delivered it. They might see it now. Top lane, they're, they're gonna, gonna try go to have a crack it out. And now, oh, Slider fits, you'll have to time lapse out. And this is where I'm just like, you don't have control over the Weaver. Uh, Kuroki, uh oh, he's trying to get more space here, but he's gonna die for a game ten or something. Living armor is just too much. And now, well, jump down by Danny oh. Banana. They caught him out. The hex as well. Shackle following up. It's a double damage chicken. Visual go again here. And that's gonna be two heroes lost for Navi on the top lane. And that coincides with the cooldown mass servant board. They're gonna go down mid now. Yep. Full push down mid. They'll have an active to for a boss, but this is too little, too late. Nubi have way too much power. They have Ravage, they have Ultimate from Moo, they have Ultimate as well from Banana, and the Weaver, like, who cares about his Ultimate? He's got Nagus the Immortal Time Lapse and a Desolator 30 minutes into this game, pumping out a large amount of damage. And without a Wisp there to back him up, yep, it's gonna be easy for him to the force the first on the timeline. Now we'll cop that little bit of damage, but Banana, Master Ward down. They've got to get rid of these wards pretty quickly. But Moo throws the ulti out. There's no fortification to defend it. This is Nubi taking racks. Yeah, that's the second lane of racks. I mean, 10 seconds, then he will be back. They're going to look for a big creep. Look at Puppy. Puppy's going to come in through the rear as well. He wants a nice ulti. When Ember Spirit's up, he gets Banana as well as Sunshine, but he's just holding him here before the fight has even really begun. But, but the mid racks is gone. Funny jumps in. Reef all over on Hal. Remember, he's going to just see Model of Horse comes like a lot of damage out, but he'll go down now. Puppy. Down to the sidelines. And we will just turn his ulti back in again. Still got a little bit more time left on it, but now it's line of fears. Denny, how much damage can he deal? How? Not enough. Able to time left itself out there to get to a better position. A wall being chased down. Xiao will commit the ravage. And she gets funny on the edge of it too. While Banana being searing chain and actually burst down. By new by the back end of the I'll try to escape from just about everybody right now, but you can't turn around. He's gonna murder Puppy with one shot. Funny trying to orb back up the hill. Look at these hits coming out from the Weaver. Then he comes in and joins the phrase, doing a ton of damage, but he constantly has to worry about his own life. And these mobile cores are running back and forth. Funny is dead. Uh, one was, more hit. That was so nicely done by Moo. Xiao Wei, he's waiting in maximum phase shift time. But Moo realized with the orb being thrown out and with phase shift on cooldown, all he had to do was just Yule Scepter him up in the air and wait out the full orb. Hits the deck, and then it can't go anywhere else from there. Four heroes down for Navi. Yeah, Newbie says if you're not gonna call GG yet, we're gonna come back. Every time these two ultimates cool down, they, they're gonna just win a fight, take a tower. And I think that's really the problem with Navi's draft. They needed somebody like Brewmaster that could go in and just start creating chaos, destroy the ward, and then move on. Because they have to run past to kill the ward, they're fighting under the ghost, or there's Ravager to deal through. This draft from Newbie is just, in my opinion, much stronger than Navi's. They are so fat, man. Right, there's a heart over on, on the crop right now, and you got the courier flying out of full BKB for Hal. So not only does he have Lincolns, he's got BKB, a Desolator. Yep. He cannot be touched by Navi. Like, the only thing which can technically hold him is, what, Tree Ulti? Which he could time lapse out if he yeah. wants to. Yeah. 
I, I don't understand where the, where the control is meant to be here. And that's why, like, when you pick up a Wisp as the last hero selection, you really, you had to win the mid lane hard. Like, if the, if the mid lane didn't succeed, then you had no extra control. You may as well have gone for a pain pick up. Now, middle lane, speaking of that, Banana, well, the Siri chains, the slide of fist to kill off trade here. Oh, oh gosh. The oh. Echo slam from Sunsheng. Ensures they stay in position. Now look at the double kill. Not just pointing out, but he's trying to get Jiao Wei to the man with the gem. Throws the ulti up, but Moo holds him in position with the ult. And hits the deck and hit for the triple kill from Hal. I won't be surprised if Na'Vi put the fingers over the G button right now because they'll lose tier 2, Radiance they'll lose tier 3, and it's under too attack. long until Danny is alive again. I think they're gonna give it one more fight. They're gonna have Glyph available, maybe they can buy a little bit of Never mind, scratch that. Radiance once Master Reward, or sorry, once Exorcism gets popped, uh, the tower is gonna be dead before Danny comes back. Yep. Of course, the turn of the saw right now. There's silences, there's the crop ulti, they're committing. The BKB from the boss, he just wants to stand the front lines, he's got the static link, summoned the dream call over a moon, Zhao Wei. But Zhao Wei, he took the sun, took the sun, funny vision will lock him out. They've lost their puck, they lose their top three tower. They'll be side battling up against Mega Creeps, and they say no more. GG it out. 34 minutes and 32 seconds, and Noobie. They will fight their way through, they were facing up against Illumination, only moments ago against Titan. Now they come up against Na'Vi here to get a spot to go up against Invictus Gaming and maybe they can get themselves straight into the winner's bracket matchup. They're off to a good start. Let's wrap it up. Let's send it back to James. What do you guys back. think on the analyst table?